Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, you and bro Nate reacts. Today we're going to be reacting to 20 genius kids who beat the system. Let's get it. When they are trying to beat the system, these 20 genius kid hacks will have you cracking up. Make sure you watch this video to the end to see a clever little guy who figured out how to play outside while following orders to stay inside. If you like funny kid moments as much as we do, be sure to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. And now, join us for 20 genius kids who beat the system, part 2, Dad's Gas. When it comes to matter, this little scientist sure knows his stuff. He proudly demonstrates it in this homework drawing. What is that? Is that some kind of kindergarten drawing? What is this? I can't even make out what that is. Solid liquid water? That's kind of cool. I don't know. Wait, like what? which illustrates solids, liquids, and gases. He's not wrong, but dad might be motivated to change his diet after seeing this homework assignment. As a matter of fact, the whole family may have to rethink Taco Tuesday. We love it that he put his mom on the drawing saying, ugh, we're sure this clever sketch artist learned a huge lesson about matter after this assignment. As in, some things are a matter of privacy. We hope his dad wasn't too embarrassed to notice his son's exceptional drawing skills. This kid is certain- He got good drawing skills. I swear he does. He put his mom in a gas, as a gas or some or a solid. I forgot, but that was pretty impressive. Only got a future as an artist or as a comedian. Keep your eye on the ball. Okay, can we talk about how adorable this little okay. guy is? He really wanted to make. I already know what's gonna happen here. He might swing the baseball bat at his dad's head. I don't know sure he followed directions to a T. So when his dad said, keep your eye on the ball, that's exactly what he did. As adults, we don't realize how strange some of our sayings are until we have to try to explain what they mean to a child. This future Little League All-Star was just doing what he was told, and his dad's reaction is priceless. That's all right, little slugger, you definitely- He said, keep your eye on the ball. He actually kept his eye on the ball. Whoa, dude is thousand IQ. Definitely made your dad smile. Maybe one day you'll be major league. Until then, keep your eye on the ball. Roses are red, tests are hard. This clever mathematician found a handy shortcut on her math test. It's a no-brainer, really. Tony buys one dozen roses. Half of them are red. How many? The strategy you have learned. Tony buys one dozen roses. One half of them are red. How many of the roses are not red? What? How many of the roses are not red? I don't know. How many of the roses are not red? Her answer? Half. If this were a test on choosing the obvious answer, this student would get an A+. However, something tells us that wasn't the answer the teacher was looking for. We picture this kid confidently leaning back in her chair, wearing sunglasses, and relaxing while her classmates struggled to finish the test. She technically got the answer right, so what's the problem? Who's ready for lunch? We think we have the next Ferris Bueller on our hands. Toast to the new year. This genius three-year-old started a new family tradition. It began innocently enough. She asked her parents why New Year's Eve is special. Start a new family tradition. Dang. I just pulled the toenail off. Shit, it's like my whole damn toenail. They explained it's because you get to toast to the new year. So it's only natural that a few hours later, she asked the obvious question. Are we going to make toast now? That may be the best idea of the entire year. That may be the best idea of the entire year. What did she do? Oh, I get it. Entire year. Who wouldn't want to celebrate with toast and jelly? We can see why her parents let that be the start of a new family tradition. And what a great way to include this little angel on the New Year's celebration. She may even carry on this New Year's Day tradition with her own children. Eat half of your grapes. Someone get this kid an award. She should get a trophy for the most literal rule follower ever. When you're a kid, snacks are serious business. The less you have, the more you want them. The more you have, the less likely you are to eat them. This kid insisted that her mom gave her too many grapes, so her mom told her to just eat half of them. And that's what she did. She ate half of- Oh my god, she actually ate half of the, each grape. That, that's 
kind of smart. That was an IQ move right there, girl. Every single grape. We have just one question. Who is going to eat the other half? Or should we just say halves? She technically did what her mom asked her to do, so her mom can't possibly have sour grapes about this, right? Feed the cat. It is important to teach a child the value- Oh, the little kitty cat. I got a cat named Garfield. He kind of fat of being a responsible pet owner, right? That's what these parents thought when they told their toddler to feed the cat. It would have worked out great if the cat had opposable thumbs. The cat is looking at his bowl as if to say, are you kidding me? Clearly the toddler thought this was a pretty genius idea. It's obvious that he wants the cat to have the same healthy foods his mom feeds him. So we think it's an adorable show of love and affection for his feline companion to give him the gift of a full unpeeled orange. A full unpeeled orange? How would how would the cat even eat that? It's like, I don't know. It would have to be a genius cat, I know that. Orange. After that, maybe he can teach the cat to knit a sweater. Too nice to play video games inside. As kids, we've all heard our parents yell at us to go outside and play. But now, with all the new video games out there, kids need a To be honest, I don't play that much games. Because I'm always working out or doing this, YouTube, and or what I like to a to-do in games is not like a a thing I do anymore. Constant reminder that there's a whole world out there that's not attached to a screen. But when this little gamer's mom told her son that it's too nice to play video games inside, this is not what she had in mind. He is technically honoring her wishes, right? And he can get to the next level on his video game. Win-win. Though he's not getting much- Do it actually bring his- Do it actually bring his computer outside. What? That was an IQ move again, bro. That was an IQ. Much exercise. It did take some effort to lug the table and chair out there. Pretty clever, little dude. Way to game the system. The thinker. At the Modern Art Museum, this art connoisseur was told by his mother to really think about the works of art he sees and ask himself what they are trying to say. Mom posted this saying she thinks she has a wise guy on her hands. There is no doubt that he took this assignment quite literally. If he had to write a paper on this piece, he would probably say something like, It's a watered down version of class- So he's basically reacting to the- I'm confused. He's just staring at it. Classic Roman fountains. Very mainstream and trite. Left me thirsting for something more. This mom has definitely got a jokester on her hands. Sure hope she knows how to go with the flow. Draw hands on the clocks. Kids are living in the digital age, so it's not uncommon for a young mind to have a hard time grasping the concept of analog clocks. For teachers, this means the struggle is real. They have to show students a clock that doesn't just tell you the time with digital numbers. The teacher also has to show that clocks can have faces and even hands. It probably sounded really weird to this kid when the teacher gave the instructions to draw hands on clocks. Why would a clock need hands when all it does- Yo, why does a clock need hands? Oh, for kids. I understand, I understand, I understand is tell time. This bright student did follow the teacher's request. Not one of those clocks can tell time, but they've got jazz hands down pretty solid, making the computer faster. This four-year-old's dad told his son he was fixing the computer so it would run faster. Then the future tech genius thought of a solution and thought of it quick. After a little while, the young technician proudly told his dad he had solved the problem and fixed the computer to make it faster. Later, his dad found Sonic- Do we got an Einstein on our hands? Do we got an Einstein? Einstein? Anyone Einstein? Dead silence. The hedgehog inside the computer tower among the wires and boards. We all know how fast Sonic is. It's pretty logical that he could increase the speed inside any piece of equipment he can fit in. Is this a future Geek Squad employee or a prankster at his finest? The computer may or may not run faster after this edition, but it certainly is cuter. Show your thinking. To be fair, some test questions can be worded in weird ways. This is one of those times. It's as if we are witnessing the birth of test anxiety. In a math test problem in which Bobby has four dimes and Amy has 30 pennies, the student is asked which child has more money. So Bobby has four dimes, Amy has 30 pennies, which child has more money? How do you know? I don't know. 
the money. The student has the right answer. He chose Bobby. But then the test has a rather strange request. It instructs the student to show your thinking. So, the student drew a picture of himself thinking of the right answer. It even says Bobby in his thought bubble. That answer is right on the money in our books. Bedtime Story Adventure This little man's grandpa told him to get ready for a bedtime story adventure. Without hesitating for a second, this young explorer went and grabbed his warm hat and a flashlight. This might be one of the cutest things we've ever seen. He's snuggled up to grandpa and ready for anything this boy. So he, he, read, he read a story to him. Hey, that, that's like my grandpa. Why does, why does that look, look like my grandpa, bro? I swear it does. I swear it does. It's like an exact replica. Book can dish out. You never know when you might need to hang glide over the wilderness, explore a dark Icelandic volcano, or discover new Arctic lands. Whatever adventure these two dive into, they will definitely be prepared. We just hope his grandpa packed a couple of sandwiches in case they get hungry on their great bedtime story journey. Use your chopsticks. When exploring new culinary experiences, it's important to immerse oneself in the culture. At least that's what this mom was thinking when she told told her son to use his chopsticks at a Japanese restaurant. Now it takes a certain level of skill to pick up food with chopsticks, but this is next level right here. The boy wasn't sure how to eat What? Dude. Little kid. Using a spoon instead of a chopstick? That's actually smart. Because that's what you're supposed to use and then you know that like, yeah, you pick them up, you, ain't, you know soup with chopsticks, so he used them to pick up the soup spoon and masterfully fed himself with his new invention, the chopstick spoon. Get this kid in touch with Mr. Miyagi. He is moments away from being able to catch a fly with those chopsticks. Well done, Daniel-san. Put a jar of water in the dog's bowl. Ah, chores. What better way to teach a young person about responsibility? But some chores need a little explaining. For example, when this boy's mom asked him to put a jar of water in the dog's bowl, she should have added the instruction to actually pour the water from the jar into the bowl. Is it this kid's fault that he did exactly what he was told, or was he just trying to get out of an extra step before his favorite cartoon started? Either way, we hope that dog has a long tongue. Well played, young one. Wait, so the dog... I, for... I forgot what it said about the dog. We're sure your parents will think more... Oh... Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I see now. Carefully the next time they ask you to give the dog some water. Just hanging around. This little fashionista looks like she loves trying on new clothes. So imagine her disappointment when her mother told her she couldn't take the clothes off the hangers and try them on. When she saw a must-have item on the racks, she thought quickly. Her mom came around the corner to find her like this. No, wh where's she going up in the most well, yeah, well, up into the up into the North Pole or something? Like I feel like she in a Warehouse where it gets warm at, and that's only for winter. Like, I look, she's like, what did I just get myself into? Now, technically, she didn't break the rules. She just found the best of both worlds. The jacket is still on the hanger, but now it's just inhabited by a curious little shopper. That's definitely her color. Do you think this little trick helped convince her mom to add to what must be an extensive wardrobe collection? Put the pizza costume back where it goes. Many parents know the struggle of taking kids to the store. It starts out as a quick shopping trip to pick up the essentials, and you end up with a bunch of unnecessary extras in your cart like for example a pizza costume who wouldn't want to dress up as a i mean a pizza costume is cool because i actually love peach pizza is my favorite food hands down no slice of pizza that's what this clever child argued right before his parents told him to put the pizza costume back where it goes in all the excitement of finding such a treasure he may have lost track of what aisle the costume came from so he found the next logical place he's not wrong is he i don't want to see the cooler in your room again what cooler it's just a masterfully constructed cushion fort the perfect size for which to hide a forbidden cooler this little camper obeyed his parent when he said he didn't want to see the cooler in his room again well if it's hidden inside a he hid it. He actually hid it. He hid it in the cushions. I mean, wouldn't get a mushin. What would stay cold and wouldn't get a dushin. I don't know.
The Cushion Fortress, no parent has to see it there, right? His dad said he wasn't even mad. This is one way to protect your parents from witnessing the bending of a few rules. It does beg the question, what's in the cooler? Why would the kid rather disguise it than return it to the garage? Exactly how many Capri Suns is he hiding in there? Draw a plant cell. This is probably far from what the teacher expected when she asked her student to draw a plant cell. The classroom was learning about phytocells in plants, but this kid took a whole different meaning from the Draw a plant cell and identify its most important parts. No windows, iron bars. What? The prison of a plant. Oh, the plant cell. Because it's in cells. The assignment. He even went so far as to write no windows and iron bars, just in case drawing of the pouting flower in the jail cell didn't come across. Our question is, what is this flower's crime? Extortion of bees? Pollinating without a permit? In any case, we think this is a pretty clever answer. Maybe his parents should stop letting him watch crime shows before he starts booking dandelions too. Just gotta finish these mixes. Kids love to help their parents at work. This two-year-old is no exception. When her dad told her he just had to finish some mixes on the computer, she immediately went to her kitchen and grabbed a mixing bowl and a whisk. She put it on his desk. Wow. The kids are so smart, actually. Like, no oh, easy, like. So smart confident that this would speed up the process for him. After all, a person needs the proper tools when trying to finish up a mix. We're gonna go out on a limb and say that's probably not the kind of mixing her dad was doing. But you gotta love that sincere effort. She can hold her head up high, knowing she was the one responsible for helping daddy finish those mixes on time. Don't set one foot outside. When you tell your child not to set one foot outside and he finds a way to play outside without officially breaking the rules, you've got to pause and applaud his cleverness. It's clear that this kid wanted to go outside, but still wanted to follow his mom's orders. So he came up with this genius solution. Not a bad idea. His mom only said not to step his feet outside, but she didn't mention the rest of his body. This mom had better get ready. She may have a sly negotiator on her. What is that? Is that peanut butter? Her hands. You can tell he is just sitting there thinking of oh. Oh. ways to get around all the rest of the rules too. And there you have it for 20 kids. Anyway, that was some awesome 20 genius kids who beat the season system. Make sure to like and subscribe and if you guys hit that bell. Anyway, I, I hope you all have a good day.